Good morning. My name is Leanne Farling, and I am one of the social workers here at Landis Homes in residential living. I'm honored and grateful to stand here today as we kick off our second day of fellowship days. And I'm excited to share a few nuggets of wisdom as we begin our morning's devotional. Please join me. Did you know that only 18 weeks, a precious baby inside a mother's womb begins to hear sounds? Perhaps they hear their mother's voice, words, or music from the world they are about to enter. And at the end of life, families of patients close to death are often encouraged by doctors and nurses to talk to their relatives and whisper words of comfort they may have. Hospice nurses often play music for the people they care for. This is because research suggests that the sense of hearing is the last sense a human being has while waiting to be called to their heavenly home. Hearing and listening are two skills we develop early in life, before we're even born, and we continue listening until we pass on. Listening and performing music during childhood and now adulthood has been a huge part of my life. At age five, I began learning what you may know as the Suzuki method of music. So before I could read music, I was trained to listen and then work out that sonata or song on the piano. It not only heightened my sense of hearing, but allowed me to read music much better to this day. Much of the music I enjoy listening to these days come from my core days in church, singing what we now call the old-fashioned hymns. I believe that music is a gift. Music is a memory, and music can take us to places we may never visit or see. And some music reminds us of special occasions or relationships, like singing lullabies to your children, or your parents' favorite song that reminds you of them every time you hear it. So it seems appropriate as we look forward to our annual hymn sing tomorrow for me to share with you one of my favorite hymns, which Jenny just played, Have Thine Own Way. Here is the story of this hymn's author. Isaiah 64, 8 says, But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art the potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. This simple expression, it really doesn't matter what you do with us, Lord, just have your way with our lives, was prayed by an elderly woman at a prayer meeting one night and was the source of inspiration that prompted the writing of this popular consecration hymn in 1902. From that time to the present, it has been an influential hymn in aiding individuals to examine and submit their lives to the Lordship of Christ. The author of this hymn text, Adelaide A. Pollard, was herself experiencing a distress of soul during this time. It appears that it was a period in her life when she had been unsuccessful in raising funds to make a desired trip to Africa for missionary service. In this state of discouragement, she attended a little prayer meeting one night and was greatly impressed with the prayer of an elderly woman there who omitted the usual request for blessings and things and simply petitioned God for an understanding of his will in her life. And upon returning home that evening, Miss Pollard meditated further on the story of the potter found in Jeremiah 18, 3 and 4. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. But before retiring that night, Adelaide Polar completed the writing of all four stanzas of this hymn as we sing it today. She was born and known as a remarkable woman on November 27, 1862 in Bloomfield, Iowa. She was named Sarah by her parents, but because of her later dislike for this name, she adopted the name Adelaide. After an early training in elocution and physical culture, she moved to Chicago, Illinois during the 1880s and taught in several girls' schools. 
During this time, she became rather well known as an itinerant Bible teacher. Miss Polar desired to travel and minister in Africa, but when these plans failed to materialize, she spent several years teaching at the missionary training school at Nyack on the Hudson. She finally got to Africa for a short time, just prior to World War I, but then spent most of the war years in Scotland. Following the war, she returned to America and continued to minister throughout New England, even though by now she was very frail and in poor health. Miss Pollard wrote a number of other hymn texts throughout her life, although no one knows exactly how many since she never wanted any recognition for her accomplishments. Most of her writing are simply signed A A P. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, Lord is our only hymn still in use today. And the music for this text was supplied by George Cole Stebbins, that you may know as one of the leading gospel musicians of our century. On a personal note, most of the women in my family have played piano. I remember sitting with my maternal grandmother and my mom, and we would stand around and sing this hymn in four-part harmony, as well as other beloved songs. But the words to this hymn have always struck me. And what I love about this hymn is the working together of ourselves and the Lord. Not only are we waiting, we are listening and we're yielding. And this is not an inactive response. This is an active response to God's love for us. And in that waiting and the yielding, we have faith and hope that the Lord will mold us just like the potter molded the clay. He will fill us with his spirit and he will ultimately live in us, which enables us to live in harmony and fellowship together, just as we are celebrating our days of fellowship this week. I'd like to close with a short poem by an unknown author entitled, I am willing. I am willing to receive what thou givest, to lack what thou withholdest, to relinquish what thou takest, to surrender what thou claimest, to suffer what thou ordainest, to do what thou commandest, and to wait until thou sayest, go. Thank you.